Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let's rise and face the cross here at the entrance of the church as we begin our Christmas Eve service this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Mighty God, Prince of Peace. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, as you sent the angels on that blessed night to announce good news and great joy, so by your word this night, Lord, let us hear that good news anew and be filled with that joy unto life everlasting. In the name of the newborn Savior Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those who, with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made, made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours. It is great to be with you on this Christmas Eve as we uh, rejoice in the celebration of our Lord's birth some 2,000, a little over 2,000 years ago to be able to continue to celebrate it with the rest of the world and of history uh, this night and tomorrow as well. Uh, tonight, what I would uh, like to do is talk about um, the role and the importance of faith. What does faith play in all of this? What is your faith? What is your trust in God? What is your belief? Uh, play in all of this and, and the importance of it. Um, so uh, we just heard the story of Mary giving birth to her firstborn son. Now, we do the math. Nine months earlier, an angel came to her. You remember the name of the angel? Gabriel. Good. All right, we're going to go to quiz you. See how well you guys know your stuff compared to the later service tonight. Okay. Uh, Gabriel came to her, gave her the news um, uh, that a miraculous pregnancy was going to take place. Miraculous, why? Because there was not going to be an earthly father. Okay, that's a little different, isn't it? Uh, indeed, uh, the Holy Spirit would come upon her and conceive in her a child, and that child uh, would be the Savior, it would be the Son of God and the Son of Man. And um, I don't know about you, but if I heard about something like that today, you'd think it'd be kind of nutty, wouldn't you? Okay, kind of strange. And yet for uh, one reason or another, 
Mary believed. She had faith. She trusted in the words that were given to her of the Lord through the angel. And uh, she had faith, and nine months later, the Lord fulfilled his word. Here's the harder question, especially if I ask Nikki Dreyer not to answer it. <laughs> She's like the trump card. She's at both services anyway. Okay. Uh, a few months before the angel Gabriel went to Mary, the same angel, Gabriel, went to someone else to announce another miraculous pregnancy that was going to take place. To whom, to whom did the angel Gabriel go that time? Not Elizabeth, you're close. Angel went to her husband. Thank you, Nikki, save of the day. <laughs> Zechariah. Yeah, Zechariah. Zechariah was in the temple at the time doing his, uh, his priestly service. And the angel uh, came to Zechariah and said, um, again, a few months before he, the angel went to Mary, and said, Zechariah, are you and your wife going to experience a miraculous pregnancy? Miraculous why? Well, uh, for this one, it was because uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth had been married, you know, so long that they'd already celebrated all those milestones, okay? Uh, but for all those decades, they had tried to have children, they couldn't. And um, not that they didn't want to, they, 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 they really did. And we know that happens today sometimes as well. And uh, they were barren, and now they were past childbearing age. And, um, you know, that was now off their list, off their radar, even though they, they probably prayed about it a million times earlier. They were done. It's one of those, well, I guess the Lord has said no. Uh, but the angel said, no, you're, yeah, you're, you're going to have a child. And um, so the angel gives this news, and Zechariah hears this news, I thinks it's nuts, and uh, Zechariah responded to the angel with no faith. <laughs> Uh, right, so he did. He did not. He did not believe uh, the promise of the Lord uh, through the angel. Unlike Mary, so Mary believed, okay, and the Lord fulfilled the promise. Zachariah, on the other hand, did not have the faith, okay, and so the Lord fulfilled the promise anyway, didn't he? Okay, he did fulfill. And who was born? John the Baptist, yes, John the Baptist, thank you, so you say that's my point, Woo, a close one, okay, and so nine months later, John the Baptist was born, okay, so Mary believed the Lord was faithful, Zechariah did not believe the Lord was faithful, okay. um, Mark, can you switch to the next slide, sing this with me. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list, he's checking it twice, gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better, yeah. Yeah, you know the rest, okay. <laughs> um, cool with Santa Claus, I guess. That's, I mean, if Santa, if Santa wants to do that, that's cool. That's fine. I'm not, I'm not gonna argue with him. We run into a lot of trouble we run into a lot of trouble when we use this type of thinking when it comes to God. 
I, 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 gosh, last week is so funny. I was like four different people I was talking to just randomly and, and talking about how growing up, they were just, it was just kind of pounded into them. You know, God's watching you. You know, as, as kids, God's watching you. Better, you, you better be careful what you're doing. God, God's, God can see what you're doing, okay? Not only can he see what you're doing, but he can even see your heart, right? So he knows when things aren't going the right way. Okay, you can't hide. You can hide it from everyone else. Okay. You know, you, you may be able to fool your parents with your lies, but you can't fool God. God knows. <laughs> He's watching you. Okay. He's keeping an eye on you. He sees what's inside of you. You know what? Sure, he does. Yeah, of course he does. There's nothing that he knows how many hairs are on your head. But if you translate that into, therefore, God treats you differently. If you take that in, that, that, you know, whether you're naughty or nice, whether you're good or bad, what you're doing and you're sleeping and you're waking, and you let that then have an effect on what you feel God will do in response to you, my goodness, what kind of... I don't know about you, but I can go in 15-minute shifts. <laughs> 15 minutes this way, 15 minutes that way. <laughs> and if God is shifting every time I shift, that'd be awfully scary. And I don't know if you could really call it love. Next slide, Mark. Oh, that's blank. But go to the next one. We'll just leave it on this one. That's it. So the angels came on that night, and uh, they were filled with fear because that was often because you know what natural man our natural state is to worry. You know, what's God gonna do? And so if we see a God thing, it's like, what's He gonna do? I, because I haven't done enough, okay? Because I'm not where I should be, so what's he going to do to me? The shepherds, not strange, were filled with fear when the angels came. And the angels said to them what God so often says to his people, what Jesus, when he came, said time and time again, including when he rose from the dead, fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for... Does it say all the good people? Does it say all the faithful people? Does it say all the churchgoers? The Lutherans? <laughs> Those people who come out to the 5 o'clock service, you know? <laughs> That's right, man, they're the dedicated ones. <laughs> no, it says all the people, including the people you don't like. <laughs> but including you as well. This is love, that God sent his son into an unfaithful world, a world that did not deserve them. They had messed up, they had messed up from the beginning. Every generation, every people, every nation rebelled with unfaithfulness toward God making their own gods, following their own ways, going against God, going against one another. It's called wickedness. Okay? God had chosen one people to be his own, to bring his, his, his uh, son through that people. Was that people faithful? No. The story of Scripture, I, even, I love the story of Scripture, even the heroes, the greatest, he, the greatest heroes of the faith, Moses, David, you name them, okay? Scripture also shares with us their unfaithfulness. Time and time again, not one is deserving. And yet God remains faithful. And so he sends his son into this world to a people that even if they were to reject him, even if they were to 
not trust him, even if they were to fight against him, even if they were to put him to death, murder him on a cross. Nonetheless, he would not let that get in the way of the faithfulness of his love toward them, even if it would mean he'd have to come back from the dead in order to love the very people who put him there, which, of course, is what he did. So um, our God has a miraculous message for you. You are adored. God delights in you. He looks at you and he sees, this is my child with whom I am well pleased. And he does this on days where you don't even think of him. He does this at moments where you are rebelling against him. He does this in moments where your doubts are that much greater than your faith could ever be. He does this when you're doing things that people aren't even made to do. He does this just because he loves you. And truth be told, if we really think about it, it's nuts. It makes no sense. If you really think about it, it makes more sense for a virgin to give birth than for God to love us and accept us, and embrace us, and treasure us the way he does. And if it's so nutty for us that we respond to it like Zachariah did, ain't going to happen, okay? Or if we respond to it like Mary did, Let it be as you have said. Either way doesn't change the truth of his faithfulness toward you. That's the Christmas message. The incarnation, the word who became flesh to dwell among us to take on the name God with us, Emmanuel. And whatever we do with our faith life between now and Sunday, next month, Easter, next Christmas, our dying breath, There is nothing in heaven or on earth that can get in the way of God's love, his grace, his promises, and his faithfulness toward you. Merry Christmas. Amen. All right. What are we singing? Angels we have heard on high. Let's stand up to sing.
Let us turn our attention to prayer. As once the night shone with the brightness of the one light, the one true light, enlighten our hearts this night, O God, that rejoicing in the birth of our Savior, we may approach your throne of grace with courage and confidence, praying on behalf of ourselves and for all people as they have need. Merciful Father, we give you thanks for all your mercies, which are new each morning, but most especially do we praise your goodness for giving us the gift of your only Son, and for his revelation of his grace and his mighty acts of deliverance by which, which we have been saved. Keep us faithful to Christ that we may know and delight in his word. Through the ministry of his word, bring forth in us good fruit in keeping with your will and purpose. Lord, in your mercy. We pray to you, O Lord, on behalf of your church here and throughout the world. Strengthen us in faith toward you and in love toward one another. Raise up those who will bring your saving gospel to those who have not heard, that by hearing they may believe, and by believing they may rejoice in the incarnation of your Son, the gift that has been given to them and his work to save us from our sins and rescue us from death and the grave. Lord, in your mercy. Grant your blessing, O Lord, to all citizens of this land and those who serve us in your name. Especially, Lord, we lift up to you the President, the Congress of the United States, the Governor of this state, and all judges and magistrates. Grant that they may exercise the authority entrusted to them according to your divine providence and seek to fulfill your will and purpose. Give peace to the nations and preserve those who suffer the threat of persecution and death for your sake. Lord, in your mercy. Be with those who cry to you in any need. Grant to them grace sufficient to preserve them in the day of trouble and provide for them according to your will, healing and comfort for all their needs of body and soul. Grant to them strength that they may not lose heart or grow weary under the strain of affliction, but rejoice in your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy. As our families gather in this holy season of our Savior's birth, give to us patience that we may be slow to judge and quick to forgive. Give to the lonely the comfort of your presence and help us to extend to them the welcome of our homes and the friendship of your grace. Make us mindful of those less fortunate who celebrate this blessed feast in poverty and want. Lord, in your mercy. All these things we pray you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, your own Son, whom you have made known to us in the mystery of the Word made flesh, who has fulfilled all the law and the prophets and delivered us to you as your own people through the blood of the everlasting covenant, that we may do what is good and right and pleasing in your sight. To you be all glory and honor, worship and praise, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace with each other.
Let us rise. We pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all good things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing in you the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The same way, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
Let us rise. And may this body and blood strengthen and preserve you steadfast in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We pray, O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sends your, sends your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and our minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled to constantly serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.